These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Alright, well you guys have gone over uh, a lot of material in the last couple of weeks. Um, that is just a whole bunch of new reactions and each reaction takes a while to uh, digest. Now the main two, uh, new type of functional group that you guys have been looking at is functional groups that look like this. Um, so you remember, you remember, what's the name of this type of functional group? An alkene. Alkene, that's right. Alkene, good. And uh, we won't start with these, but for completeness, what type of functional group is this? Alkyne. Alkyne. And if you just have carbon-carbon single bonds, that would be alkane. All right, now the most important types of reactions we've gone over again is alkenes. So let's just start going through the reactions and we'll see um, how comfortable you are with those. Okay, well, uh, let's try drawing the product from this reaction. Okay, no sweat. So we're turning double bond into a single bond. By the way, what, what's the name of this type of reaction? Um, addition? Hydrogenation, that's right. Um, and what general group is that in? Is this substitution, elimination, or addition? Addition. Yeah, addition. Because what is an addition reaction? An addition reaction is a reaction that removes a pi bond. Well, here we're removing the pi bond. Well, why is it called an addition reaction if it's removing the pi bond? Because the way it removes the pi bond is by adding two hydrogens. We're adding atoms to remove the pi bond. Yeah. An elimination reaction is the reverse of that. An elimination reaction adds a pi bond, forms a pi bond, and the way it does that is by eliminating two atoms. Okay, well. Let's see if we can draw this product. Now, one thing, remember that these are methyl groups, because there's oh, no hydrogen yeah. there.
Okay, that's not bad. Now, is there going to be one product from this or two products? Two. In that case, we need to draw all the products. of this reaction, so that's good. All right, so uh, for uh, this hydrogenation uh, over here, it helps to start by, say, drawing the two hydrogens uh, that have uh, come in over here. All right, and then um, say, where am I going to? Uh, actually, I think the uh, the easiest way to think about this is actually to rewrite this and remember these are methyl groups here on the end, maybe I'll write in the ME for methyl. I actually think it's easiest in this case to write the alkene like this, but all we're doing is rotating it. Here we have the alkene fat, uh, flat on the board, but then if we rotate it like this, uh, in this picture the methyl is pointing down, but in this picture the methyl would be pointing towards you. This actually makes it easier to see the mechanism of the hydrogenation. Okay, um, and the key point here is that now the hydrogen can attack from either above or from below. The hydrogen can attack from either above or from below. Well, if it attacks from above, If we attack from above, we would get this product. The answers you wrote, by the way, were correct. I just think this is a little bit more reliable way to get it or to understand it. But uh, you have the right products once you put in the second product. OK. Um, now, if the hydrogen attacks from below, you can see I would push this deuterium and this methyl down like this. But it wouldn't change them. It wouldn't flip their positions. The deuterium would still be pointing away from you, and the methyl would still be pointing towards you. So you can see here, D is still on the dash, and methyl is on the wedge. And in this picture, if this hydrogen comes in on the right, it will push the methyl and the deuterium down. But the methyl is still pointing away, and the deuterium is still pointing towards it. So that would give us one of the products. On the other hand, however, the hydrogens could attack from below. And then they would push the methyl and the deuterium up. Remember, we're using capital D for deuterium. That's just an isotope of hydrogen. And on the right-hand side, they would push the deuterium and the methyl up. OK. It is just a different way of drawing the products that you got on your own. Now, you always have to check, though, whether uh, two products are the same or different. Maybe, uh, maybe you were right the first time when you said these were going to be the same, actually. Let's see. So are these two products uh, going to be the same or different than each other? It might have been easier to compare them the way you drew them originally, actually. The question you want to ask is, is there any way to rotate or flip one of these so it looks like the other picture? That's actually a, a common mistake. I think these are actually different. Um, if you look at these pictures because on the board, they can't, they're not, they can't pull them into each other, so it's not, it's, so there, there has to be two of them then? Because, because it's not a mirror image or it's not a meso compound, so there has to be two, right? The, the, the only way to really tell is to ask, is there any way to flip or rotate this picture so that it looks like this picture? Well, if you flipped this one, then it would change the wedge and dash, right? Uh, are you looking at this picture? Now, one thing that seems clear is it seems like we need to turn this upside down in order to make it look like this. But if you turned this um, upside down, the deuter this deuterium would still be on a wedge. Right. And, and it wouldn't correspond to this one. So if you turn these upside down, the reason you're turning them upside down is to hope that this deuterium will correspond to this deuterium. Mm -hmm. But it still won't work because this deuterium would still be on the wedge and this one would be on the dash. OK. That's actually an important skill to keep practicing. It just comes with practice. Um, being able to tell whether you can flip or rotate one molecule to see whether it's the same as another one or not. So these are definitely two different molecules. If we turn this one upside down, 
this deuterium would still not be in the same position as this deuterium because this is on a wedge and this is on a dash. So there really are two products here. It's important to draw uh, both of them. 